Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm Mariam. Today we are going to be testing a lot of new makeup. And when I say a lot, this time I really mean it. It's a, a lot. lot. I am looking at my table right now. It is a hot ass mess. There's a holiday collection from every single possible brand out there. But today I'm going to be slapping it all on, testing it out, creating this look for you, even though it's not really a look. It's more of like a tester. So I hope you guys like this review. I hope you like this video. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. Remember Remember, Wednesdays and Sundays, hit that notification bell. And now, let's get into this video. Testing new makeup for the month of November. Here we come. Fresh little cut. Who this? Oh, it's me. All right, you guys. So let's jump into all of this newness. There is so much. It's almost a little bit overwhelming for me. I don't believe that there is a new primer around. However, I do have a new Glow Lust from Auric. So I will be mixing that in with my foundation. So first, I'm just going to apply my YSL primer that I totally forgot about. And then after I did the Vib Sale recommendations, after I did that video, I realized that I miss this primer. I miss using it. And so since then, I've been using it nonstop. And it's just such a great, amazing, smoothing, beautifying primer that is very expensive that I don't recommend often, but I like it a lot. And it's also probably like the only primer that I like to apply with my fingers. All right, face is nice and primed. Next thing I'm going to do is reach for this new Glow Lust from Samantha Ravendahl here on YouTube. This is her brand, Auric. So this here is a new shade and it is called Sunstone. Apparently this is an overwhelming amount of requests manifested. So this is a medium neutral shade and the name is Sunstone. So let's see, I'm gonna apply some to the back of my hand. Wow. I'm gonna apply that first to my bare face just to show you the color so you can really appreciate the luminosity. This is probably also something that would work really well as a highlighter or as just like a skin base if you have really, really nice skin and don't need much coverage. This just gives a really beautiful radiance to your complexion. And I gotta say, this is a really, really lovely shade. I, I don't know if it's just me. I'm thinking this is offering a little bit more coverage than the previous Glow Lust. The previous Glow Lust were more of like a highlighter type of product, but this I could actually see wearing as an all over product. I really like it. I think it looks great on the skin. It looks really nice on camera. So next I'm just going to add my Dior Backstage Foundation in the shade 3W. I also sometimes wear 3WO, which is more of like an olive consistency. You guys, my table is so packed with stuff that I literally had to like move my mirror all the way out of the way. So if you see me struggling, just know the reason. Also, I have a massive animal on my face today in the most unflattering spot, by the way. Like why would anyone get an animal right here on the border of that really soft under eye skin and like your actual pore zone? This is a terrible, terrible situation. It hurts. I'm not happy with it, but I'm going to work around it. Okay. I feel like that was just like a really, really lovely combo and I'm really pleased with everything. Yeah. Looking good, boo. Okay, next up, where do I even begin? Let me just add my concealer real quick. I'm gonna grab my Fenty Bright Fix. I actually don't have anything new in the complexion category outside of the Aura Glow Lust, but now is not really the time when brands are coming out with foundations and concealers and powders. Now is the time for holiday collections. And right now, looking at my table in front of me, a lot of what I'm seeing is holiday geared. Tons of highlighters, of course. Tons of blushes and bronzers and things like that. Setting that super quick. All right, so face base is kind of set. Next thing that I'm gonna be testing out is this stunning palette from Lunar Beauty. This is the Outer Dimensions Face Palette. It's my first time looking at it. This packaging is incredible. It feels very heavy. It feels very, very cool. And this is my first time looking at the shades. Yes, I have heard the controversy. Yes, I am well aware that some people think this is not enough shades to cater to all skin tones. And on camera, I will say I definitely do see that there's a lot of lighter shades and not as many deeper shades. But at the same token, I feel like this uh, dark sky shade here looks pretty decent to me. So let's just go ahead and test that out. I am going to grab my Charlotte T brush. I'm going to dip into this peach sky shade. I think this would be a good shade for me to brighten my under eye with and just kind of lift my cheekbones. Powders do feel really, really nice, really, really smooth. Hmm. 
Definitely not bad. All right, so now I'm gonna reach for perhaps this shade here, Tan Sky. This would be like a bronzing shade that I would typically reach for to warm up and to add dimension to like my forehead. Wow, the powder I will say is very, very soft. There's a lot of pigment, so it's not something that feels dry. Although I do see that it's kind of clinging to like a dry patch that I had here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reach for that same shade and kind of chisel out the back of my cheekbone, lift that up. Okay, definitely not bad for me, but let me test out the other shades. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the tan sky that I just applied to my face. Let's just test that here. Here we go. Next one would be deep sky, and the final deepest shade is dark sky. And here are the three deepest shades from the outer dimension face palette. So I'm gonna pose the question to you guys. Do you think there needs to be more deeper shades or do you think this is enough? Makeup artists, sound off. I really wanna hear from you. One thing I will say personally, just from my own observation, I think there are a lot of very, very light shades. So it could have been nice to include something perhaps in between tan sky and bronze sky, because this one almost falls into a highlight category for someone who is just like a little bit more tan than I am. So I think it could have been nice to just like eliminate one of these and maybe put in one extra deeper shade or like one extra bronzing shade. But anyway, I wanna hear from you guys. I wanna open up this really beautiful package from Yes Style. First of all, you guys probably already know if you've been watching my videos for a while, I'm like slightly obsessed with Yes Style. Yes Style is basically like the Asian Amazon for beauty products and also for fashion and also for lifestyle and also for just like all things cool. And so I'm very excited because they sent me this super cute Christmas package with a personalized card and lots of goodies in here. So I definitely wanna see what we have. Ooh, yes. I love these hydro colloid um, acne patches from CosRx. I love these. So we've got some of those. We've got some makeup in here. We've got some brow pencils, perfect. We've got some eyeshadow palettes. We've got a mascara. Ooh, we've got the Bye Bye Blackhead. 30 Days Miracle Green Tea Tox Bubble Cleanser, what? So exciting. We also have a cleansing balm, hydrogel eye patch. Oh, we've got more K-Beauty. We've got some lippies here. Cutest little mirror ever. And we've got some clothes. This is so, so cool. I am definitely gonna reach for these brow pencils because I wanna see what exactly they do. I'm a big fan of like K-Beauty and J-Beauty brow products in general. I just find that they work better for my brows. Only problem is this plastic packaging. It kills me every time. Why is this so difficult? I break all my nails whenever I do this. This is so tragic. Oh my God. <sighs> if that is not the most stressful ordeal, I don't know what is. But anyway. Back to the brows. So we've got two lovely eyebrow pencils here from Tony Moly, one of my favorite K-Beauty brands. We've got two shades, looks like a black, like a literal black. And we also have a gray, which looks like a literal gray. Huh. So interesting. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to go for the black. So basically, I'm just gonna brush out my brow. I'm gonna brush it down first, just so I can get a sense for the top line of my brow. Then I'm gonna brush it up so I can get a sense for the base of my brow. I would say this is a really, really pigmented brow pencil, almost a little too pigmented to be a brow pencil because you can very easily achieve angry brows, scary brows, evil brows, just because the pigment is so strong. But because the pigment is so strong, it is very easy to actually fill in your brows quickly. So now the spoolie here is very soft and efficient. You can definitely easily brush out all that product. But still, the shade to me is just like a little too black. It's a little too cool. Definitely not something that everyone can wear and get away with. And mind you, my brow hairs are naturally black, but shading them with black just makes my brow look really heavy and really harsh. But of course I can fix it. All right, let's try a different brow product. I have also a whole bunch of products from It Cosmetics from their Universal Taupe collection. So now we have the Universal Volumizing Brow Pencil, just the Universal Brow Pencil, and then a Defining Brow Pencil, as well as a Brow Power Filler Gel. Now this brow product, the reason why I even wanna try 
try it. It's also made in Korea, so I kind of want to like compare these two because I find them to be very similar. There's a spoolie on one side, and then there's kind of like a similar pencil on the other side, except the shade is called Universal Taupe. So it's a very different color, but a very, very similar product. Now, this is something that I've tried before. This isn't a new product from It Cosmetics, it's something that's been around for a while. All right, so I blended out the Universal Taupe. I will say it's definitely not a taupe. It's more of a soft brown, like not too cool, not too warm, just like a nice neutral brown. And now I have two different color eyebrows. It could be a thing, right? And now the black one suddenly doesn't look <laughs> so bad. Maybe because I'm just like not a brown eyebrow type of gal. But anyway, so now I'm going to go for the Brow Power Filler. So this is a fiber brow gel. Ooh, where am I heading with this? This might not be a great idea, but we're testing makeup, so why not? Oh, oh, oh God, yeah, this is a product that I don't particularly love or understand how to use. It has this really weird insect looking paddle with little bristles and also um, a felt tip. So it looks very, very gimmicky to me. I don't recall liking this product when it first launched. So I don't presume that I'm gonna be liking it now, but you know what? For the sake of matching my brows a little bit better, let's just go for it and let's try to use it here on this black brow. I'm gonna attempt to glue down these brow hairs and the ends. I don't know, definitely not my vibe. I'm gonna set that aside. All right, moving on to Natasha Denona face palette. We have two palettes and they are actually from the Glam Face collection. So this is the dark palette and it comes in this uh, deeper bronzy packaging. So it looks like we have a highlighter and also a blush in here and five eyeshadows. They look stunning, honestly. Like first impression, this is a stunning, stunning, stunning palette. And then the light palette comes in like a champagne mirrored case. And here we also have a blush and a highlighter and five different eyeshadows. So this is kind of what I want to use for blush. I'm gonna reach for the light palette for the blush. Creamy formula here, but applies almost like a cream to powder finish. Definitely very easily with this brush. And this is my original Pixie Collab brush from like three years ago. Unfortunately, it is no longer available, but this is the perfect brush to apply a creamy type of blush like this. Ooh, that is just stunning. And even though I already contoured with a powder, I already applied my highlight powder, this is working very well with everything else I have going on. So I like that. I like that a lot. Definitely interesting. I'm gonna reach for the deeper shade as well, just to see how deep is it really. This one has more of like a brick undertone. So not like a blush shade that I would typically go for, but beautiful. Setting those aside for now. Before we get into the makeup, I do have one thing that I wanted to call the swatch model in for, and it is for a little trial of Key X Maluma, shall we? All right. All right. Uh, ladies, we've got Key X Maluma for your man. In this PR package, we have two new shades by V Maluma, and this one's called On The Fly. So I believe these are two new additions. Cool. I'm loving this. To his collection Hold with on. Key. You ready for it? I'm ready for it. All right, bam. Yas, yas. Hey, oh, what's up? <laughs> What's up, y'all? What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. Hey, I'm cool. Next, next one. Oh, sweetie. You got this. Now I'm giving real world like interactions. <laughs> Please stop that immediately. Oh, <laughs> is that you? Is that you? All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. It's the worst. And before <laughs> and after. Honestly, I feel like these are fire on you. They're absolutely not Asian face friendly, so they do not work for me, but Ladies, if you want your man to look like Maluma, this is the Christmas gift that he needs, AKA the Christmas gift that you need. <laughs> Thank you. Peace out, yeah. Oh, wait, I'll show them that they absolutely do not fit oh, me yeah, though. Here's this one too. Like not at all. They sit on my cheeks and not on my actual nose. You definitely need a nose bridge for these because look, Sad, but true. All right, anyways, where were we? Even though that was not makeup, I feel like that Key Australia X Maluma collection will sell out very quickly, so I had to show it to you guys. Also, everything that I'm talking about, everything that I'm liking, I'm linking down below, and I am definitely liking those shades on Lee. Like I said, could be a nice holiday gift for your man, or perhaps even for you, if you want your man to look like you know who. Anyways, moving along to makeup. We have a lot of holiday stuff from MAC, like a whole ass massive collection. Okay, I 
think I have just unpacked everything from this MAC holiday collection. We have a lot of stuff. We have really cool looking, very prismatic, super sparkly eyeshadows, just like super unique finishes, very multi-dimensional, super chromatic. We also have some highlighters for different skin tones. We've got some lip glass lip glosses. Very festive. We have a bunch of bullet lipsticks. Really, really cool looking pencil liners. Almost looks like a magic wand, like bing, and your eye's done. So cute. I feel like MAC always comes out with something cool for the holidays. A lot of it is very, very sparkly, very, very glittery. Not something that you can necessarily use all year round. But nonetheless, they definitely always push the envelope and they try to bring us something that is festive, that is fun, that's for the season. So I really appreciate that. Next up, we have another holiday collection, but from NARS. Similarly to MAC, NARS also excels at these holiday packages. There's always like really nice duos and like nice kits that they offer for the holidays. Cute like stocking stuffers, things like that. So honestly, a lot of these I will probably keep for gifts. There's like mini eyeshadow palettes in here. So cute, like just so adorable. It really makes me smile. We also have this bigger palette here. Now this one, ooh, is actually called the Full Access Face Kit and looks like it is a blush, highlighter, and contour palette. Very cool packaging, also comes with a brush. I don't know, for some reason the NARS holiday collection doesn't excite me as much as the MAC one does because NARS always basically just repackages their existing product for their holiday collection as opposed to creating new ones like MAC does. So it's not like as interesting to me. And a lot of the stuff is um, products that I already own just in holiday packaging. We also have a makeup bag here. The makeup bag is always very nice every year. And in it we have a little minis kit, a brush, a blush, and a lip balm. So what I'm gonna do today is figure out what I'm gonna reach for because there really is so much going on here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to go for like a neutral look with like a bit of interest from one of these MAC eyeshadows. So I'm gonna grab my Natasha Denona face palette in the darker shade. I'm gonna add this shade uh, Transition which is like a brownie shade. I'm gonna add that all over my lid, concentrating most of the color in the outer portion. Okay, so basically I just added a little bit of a transition and just like a little bit of that light brownie shade to my lid, just for a little interest. And now I definitely wanna test out one of these shades because they just look so pretty and so sparkly. And I think this is a palette that a lot of you guys are interested in. So I definitely wanna dip into a few shades. I will say this inner corner shade is a little bit too bronzy for my skin tone, so it'll definitely work better on deeper skin tones. Because when I turn to the side, it doesn't look so sparkly anymore. You can kind of see that darker outline. So this would definitely not happen with someone who has a deeper complexion. So keep that in mind. Let me now actually reach for the lighter shade here in the light palette and see if I can brighten that up. Definitely much brighter on me. Next, I definitely wanna dip into one of these MAC shadows. I'm really liking these two here. They both kind of look purple, almost identical on camera, but one has a little bit more of a pinky golden reflect, whereas the other one has a bit more of a purpley green reflect. And now these are called Shade Shifter Duochrome Eyeshadows. Behind the curtain is the purpley green, and the Calling Your Bluff is the pinky golden. I'm gonna go for the pinky golden. Just gonna dip my finger into that and generously add that all over my lid. Now this is definitely looking very, very foiled, very fun and interesting. Could be like a one and done type of eyeshadow, but let me actually try the other shade on my other lid. Honestly, they are very similar. I don't think you could tell the difference on camera. In person, there's like a slight difference, but really not enough for me to want to come out with both, if I were MAC. There's also this really beautiful shade called Tall, Dark, and Handsome. I'm gonna swatch it, because it just looks very interesting. Hmm. And unfortunately, it looks a lot more interesting than it actually swatches. In the pan, it almost looks like it's a reflective, purpley, gray, black, but once swatched, it kind of just dilutes and it just looks like a little smoky gray action. But anyway, I'm still gonna apply just a little bit to my outer lid. Cause you know, today we're just playing with makeup. I'm not necessarily creating a look, although my natural tendency is to create a look, but still kind of just dipping around and trying to see what the finish and what the quality of everything is. Okay, I mean, it's cute, but is it a must have? I don't know about that. Okay, we also have 
a holiday eyeshadow palette from Lawless Cosmetics. Remember the one that's clean AF? And this is what the eyeshadow palette looks like. Kind of boring at first glance. I'm not gonna lie. Very wearable, very muted tones. I will say they are leaning towards the neutral spectrum. They're not too warm, they're not too cool. Definitely kind of on the lighter side too, with the exception of these two shades. But, you know, I'm not gonna rule it out. And let's test it out. I'm actually gonna reach for this shade here and just see how it applies, you know? Hmm, not bad actually. Not bad. For some reason, when I opened this, I was expecting, or I guess it was reminding me of those mineralist eyeshadows from Bare Minerals. Do you remember those? The ones that I absolutely did not love one bit. They were just so non-existent. So just like the color story here reminded me of those. But just like from this first application of this one eyeshadow, I can tell that the quality is different. All right, what else can I do? Let's add this shimmery, taupey shade to my brow bone. Ooh, this is actually really, really lovely. Definitely lovelier than I expected. The shade is more sandy than taupey, so that makes it kind of nice because sandy shades are just so versatile. Okay, all right. So I'm not gonna rule this palette out. I can see a lot of people gravitating towards this because it looks really easy for every day, but also has just a little something special about it to like dress it up for night or for the holiday. You guys, we got one more eyeshadow palette and it is from Jouer and it's called Le Mini Dip. Kind of reminds me of like the Naked Mini palette from Urban Decay. Also similar coloring to the Lawless Beauty palette. Like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? They're both both leaning very, very neutral. Not too cool, not too warm, just like perfectly in the middle neutrals. Okay, I don't even have enough space on like my face to try out the mini. So I'll try that out next time. Let's move on. Oh, shoot. We also have some new smoke reflex from Auric. Shoot. Okay, I can't get to that. I kind of want to try one of these MAC Magic Wand pencils. So I'm gonna reach for this gunmetal shade and add that in my waterline. This is not something that I typically do. But today I'm gonna do, just for the sake of doing it, I'm gonna reach for this shade Silhouette from the Jouer palette. Looks like a grayish brown shade. I'm just gonna smoke out and smudge out that line on the bottom. Ooh, you guys, we have a palette from NYX in collab with La Casa de Papel, AKA Money Heist on Netflix. This is what the palette looks like. It's got all the names of all the characters. I see Tokyo, I see Nairobi, as well as other names such as The Vault, Royal Mint, State Secrets, Gold Flood, etc. I may be in the minority here, but I kind of stopped watching Money Heist after it became repetitive. I think this was like season three. So I haven't watched it since, but in any case, they do have something that I am interested in and it is this highlighter gold brick. Also, this looks like a really cute little ornament or stocking stuffer. <laughs> this is the highlighter and let's see. I mean, this is very, very gold and sparkly, almost like unwearable sparkly. It definitely gives me more of like a eyeshadow finish than a highlighter finish because the glitters are very, very chunky and the powder itself feels like there's particles in it. It's kind of like emphasizing little crinkles here and a lot of the glitters are settling in the little crinkles of the skin. So mm, perhaps not a highlighter that would work for everybody. Perhaps not something that you could necessarily use on the face, maybe on the body. But anyway, I just wanted to try that out. There's also a rose gold highlighter from the same collection. We also have some lipsticks, some liners, a brush, a mirror. This I'm saving for my best friend. She is obsessed with the money heist. So this is for you, Liz. For my mascara, I'm gonna go ahead and try this mascara that was sent to me from Yes Style, and it is from the brand Hero and Make. And this is supposed to be a super waterproof mascara. I like the sound of that. I'm gonna quickly curl my lashes with none other than Shu Uyamura X Hello Kitty Limited Edition Holiday Lash Curler. This is so cute, and this whole collection just looks so adorable. I am pretty intrigued. The Shu Uyamura Lash Curler was my very first lash curler that I was gifted when I was like maybe 16. And I remember it was one of my mom's friends who was into makeup actually discovered it and she gave it to me for like my birthday or for New Year's or something like that. But for some reason, I always felt like it was like a little too curved for my eye. I didn't really, and I still don't really understand how to use this, but it is super cute. Anyway, onto the super waterproof mascara. 
This is something that excites me because it is something that is meant for Asian lashes. Therefore, it is something that I can wear confidently, being certain that it won't smudge or smear on me. Like this summer, I was absolutely obsessed with Maison mascara. It was their collagen boost mascara that I also got from YesStyle. And it was another super waterproof type of formula that I could literally like swim in. It was so good. This one, holy shit, is like extremely, extremely lengthening and volumizing. Wow. As I'm applying this mascara to my lashes, I'm realizing quickly that this is probably my favorite product from this whole testing new makeup video. Just because I'm noticing that it's making a difference in my lashes, it's making the difference quickly. And it's a unique formula that I have not seen. I wish I could show you what this looks like without all of this eye makeup, but even with this eye makeup, you could really see how long and voluminous it made my lashes. I think to the point that I don't even really need falsies. Wow, wow. All right, for the highlighter, and not for my cheek highlighter, but for the highlighter on the rest of my face, I'm gonna test out this MAC Step Bright Up Alchemy Hyper Real Glow Duo. I'm gonna grab a clean brush and just swirl that and see what happens if I add that to my forehead. This is the highlighter that I should have probably went with because it is very, very golden, but it's not chunky and it's not glittery and it's not as crazy and unwearable as this NYX one from the Money Heist collab. This one, I gotta say, I do really like. I can see myself reaching for this, not just during the holiday season, but for any season. In the lip category, we have more stuff from Shu Uyamura X Hello Kitty. We've got some Jouer lip toppers. We've got some Lunar Beauty liquid lipsticks and glosses. So let's see what we're working with. We also have a bunch of MAC lipsticks. That is really bright. Ooh, this is fun. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I actually totally forgot to mention to you guys this new collection from Maybelline, and it is their Zodiac collection of Superstay Matte Ink Lippies, and also their Superstay Ink Crayons for the lips. So because I'm a Libra, I am gonna look for the shade Libra. Here we go. This is the Libra shade. It is called Ruler Libra. Mm. And although this is pretty, it's not really a color that I like. So I'm gonna go for something else. And I don't know, I feel like a lot of these shades just um, aren't giving me the right undertone. It's not really giving me the feels. So perhaps I'm not gonna go for those. But in any case, I still wanted to show them to you. All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, cute is this? Got a nice little brown, like a brick brown. Got another brown. Hmm. And we've got a red. Okay, no. I'm just not quite excited with all the lip options that we have going on today. Wait, hold on, we have more. Okay, this is gonna have to do. This is gonna be the one. So after looking at all of my lip options from today's unboxing, I decided to land on the Shu Uyamura X Hello Kitty Apricot Colada Lip Gloss. Ooh, is it a lip gloss though? This feels so unique on the lips. Oh, hold on, so I actually found the packaging and on this packaging it says that this is a Rouge Unlimited Kinu Cream. Okay, so the, although this is not a color that I would go for and it's not a color that I was really looking for with this look, I actually can see myself wearing this shade. I feel like it's very fall appropriate and it's definitely giving me like butternut squash vibes, you know? And also just like the fact that it feels so pillowy, so like cloud-like on the lips is something new and something different. So definitely gonna set that aside for like another trial. Cause I actually wanna make this look work cause this is how I am. I'm gonna remove this one. I'm gonna save this one for a later moment. I'm gonna reach for this lippy sticks from the ColourPop of Quartz collection. I actually think that's a really cute name. And the eyeshadow palette, although I didn't get to it, looks kind of interesting though cracked. But anyway, I'm just a big fan of ColourPop's Lippy Sticks. I feel like they are really, really nice formulation. And I finally found a color that will go with this look and it is called Energy Field. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that on. Now this is the color that I was looking for to bring everything together and to make it all make sense. Now I am somewhat pleased with my final look, although it is definitely too much in certain areas, definitely a little too much in the highlighter area, definitely too much sparkle in the eyeshadow, not something that I would necessarily pair together for a look, but because this is a trial type of video where I'm testing out a lot of different products, this is what we have and this is what we are working with. Off the bat, I gotta say, I am pleasantly surprised 
with the MAC highlighter. I thought it was really nice and holiday appropriate, but also appropriate for all year round. I really enjoyed and am curious about this Kuni cream for the lips from Shu Uyamura. And just like this entire collection, I thought was really, really cutesy and kind of girly and fun. And for those of you who are Sanrio fans or Hello Kitty fans, I think this might be just like a nice thing to have as a collector. I gotta say that the NYX X La Casa de Papel collection didn't really impress me much. I don't know, I feel like they're reaching. I appreciate the show, but I don't really care to see a makeup collection with the show. Like, we don't really necessarily need to take it there. Moreover, I did not like the highlighter. I thought it was chunky, it was kiddish. It felt like cheap makeup, to be honest. Wasn't too impressed with the NARS holiday collection this year, just because I didn't see anything new outside of the cool packaging. Everything else looked the same. It was the same shades that we're used to seeing from NARS over and over again. If you like their holiday packaging this year, might be something nice to gift to someone, but then again, if you already have an orgasm, if you already have a Laguna bronzer, then you don't necessarily need to go out and purchase these. The MAC Holiday Collection eyeshadows were pretty nice, I gotta say. They always add a little jazz, a little sparkle to their eyeshadows, to their lipsticks, and to their glosses. Although not everything was like speaking to me necessarily, I appreciated it. Now these glam face palettes from Natasha Denona were definitely a hit for me. I have a feeling that a lot of people will get a lot of use out of these. These are very, very wearable colors, but also very sparkly and very holiday appropriate. The fact that there are two shades, a deep, and a light is really nice. Wasn't really too impressed with these Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink Horoscope shades. Although this is a nice formula for the lips, I just wasn't too impressed by the shade range. I thought these were very stock colors, if you know what I mean, like nothing too innovative, nothing too interesting. Definitely liked the Key X Maluma shades. I thought that was kind of like the highlight of this whole video. I just thought they looked so good on Lee and it's something that I definitely want to see him wear. What else? Super excited to try out all these Yes Style goodies, all these different lippies, all these different skincare products, all the different K-Beauty stuff, the Lunar Beauty palette. I definitely want to leave this one to you guys. I want to hear your thoughts on this shade range. I want to hear all the makeup artist thoughts on whether this is a fairly balanced palette or not, so definitely leave your thoughts down below. Let's start this conversation. Without further ado, I am going to wrap up this very, very long video, and I'm gonna call it a day. I will see you guys in my next one. Check out more videos right here, and I'll see you there. Peace. <laughs>